Hi, this is Kevin. Welcome to my tutorial for exercise three in uh, Zell at chapter eight. And just a reminder again, these exercises are ones that I've uh, created to replace the ones in the Zell text. So they're, they're not in the textbook. And um, here's the skill that we're trying to do this time. We're trying to take a program like the one that we just did um, that uh, is uh, processing a series of integers that are entered at the console using a sentinel value pattern. So we want to take that and we want to uh, we want to revise it so that instead of entering the the input at the console, uh, we have a batch file input. So it's going to follow the it's going to follow the the batch uh, pattern. And what we're initially going to do is that we're pretty going to make a one for one change. So um, in the um, in the code that we have that we're going to start with, it's used to uh, processing one value at a time. So we're just going to do the same thing. Um, and so we're going to look for one value on each of the lines in the input file. And then when that's working well, we're going to revise it so that we can put more than one value on each line of the input file, uh, separating them by spaces. So uh, how are we going to do this example? Well, we're going to start with the code from exercise two. We're going to revise it to use the batch uh, pattern. And then we're going to revise it further to allow for multiple inputs on one line separated by spaces. And we should probably say multiple inputs on each line. OK. OK, so let's see how that goes. So um, let's go back and find our code from exercise two. I guess I have it here. And it's in pretty good shape. So I'm just going to take that and copy it. All right. Bring it back to exercise three and give it a paste. And uh, let's see what we have. We're, we're, um, so our description is not accurate anymore. So process a series of integers entered at the console. Well, no, entered. Uh, uh, let's just say integers from a text file. How's that? OK. Uh, we're still going to do the same kind of processing. We're going to count the same things uh, here. I'm counting what I'm counting here, and you're going to be doing something similar for your exercise. Not the same, but similar. Um, are we still going to need an indicator to tell us when we've come to the end of the input? Yeah, we've really given up on using that break. So we want, we want the same kind of logic here. All right, that looks good. All righty. So let's think about the things that we need to do um, if we want to turn this into a batch. Uh, one of the things is that we need to get the name of the input file. And so we need to prompt for that and we need to properly open it. OK, so let's do that. And before we get down to our loop, for sure. So let's do that. So um, let's say uh, input file name equals, and let's just call the input function and pass it. Uh, please enter the input file name. OK, and we'll put a colon and a space, because that's what we've been doing, and that works fine. OK, so we're doing that. And then we're going to want to open the input file. So let's do that. So. Um, we need we need a variable name that's going to hold our reference to the file object. So let's just call it in file uh, equals, and we're going to call the the function open. It's one of the built-in ones, and we're going to give it the file name input file name. Okay, and then we want to give it the lowercase r uh, to say that we want to read. 
Okay, that looks pretty good. Mm -hmm. So, how do we read a file? Well, when you want to read it one line at a time, you're going to call the method on that file object called readLine. So, let's go to the top of our loop. We're doing all the reading in our loop at the top. And do it the same way. We're just going to convert it to work with uh, a text input file. So, are we going to get back a value? Well, in the beginning, we're going to get back, you know, we're getting back a line. We're getting back one line at a time. Are we going to treat it as a single value? Well, in the beginning, we can, but let's, uh, let's call a line a line. So, let's say a uh, line. Uh, equals, uh, and then we're going to call our, uh, going to use our input file object in file, um, read line, print, print. Okay, so that's going to get us a line at a time. Okay, all right, that's fine. Now, this is kind of like doing the same thing as our prompt and read was doing here. So let's just get rid of our prompt and read. Okay. So uh, let's check for end file. So how do we do that? Well, line is the thing that's going to empty the uh, equal to empty string. So let's, our uh, test is going to be if line uh, equal equal uh, the empty string Okay, then well, we want to signal end of file. So I think we, we, we've got the right code here, just has to hang off of this. Okay. Okay. So where are we? Well, we're almost hooked up, but we're uh, we're expecting we're expecting that value is string before, and we're getting line. Okay, so let's try this. Let's let's say that this is uh, that uh, value as string. Let's just uh, give it the whole line. Okay. Yeah, whatever we get from the file, we'll give it to there, and we'll just we'll just act like it's a single value, and we'll pass it in to to uh, the function int, and it's probably going to work just fine. Let's see if that works. Oh, I think it does. Okay. Now that's good. Now, uh, do we have to worry about? trying to process after we've hit end of file. No, because we already have that else. We already have all of our processing hanging off the else. It doesn't go wrong. Uh, it only processes when we have a real value. That's terrific. Okay, so that's in good shape. Um, what about the end processing? No, that looks good too. If there are no values entered, it's going to give us an appropriate message in a it's going to give us the counts the way that we want them. I think that's good. So I'm thinking this is enough to get one value per line. And let's see how this works. So let us um, come up with a file. And I'm going to want you to put yours right in your, um, in your project. Uh, and let's, let's say we want a new file. And uh, let's call this um, integer integer series dot text. Okay, it's a series of integers. Okay, and what are we going to want? Well, we're going to want some data that can test it. Okay, now what's going to test yours is not going to test mine because I'm counting things that are different than what you're testing. But, um, so, let's see. I'm going to put uh, uh, 0, 1, 
11, 21, 55, 100, 101, 102, uh, uh, negative 1, negative 5, uh, negative 55, negative 101. Okay? So, let's make sure we got that saved. And let's go back. And it's called integer series.txt. So let's give it a run. Integer series.txt. And it ran. So let's see. Count of values evenly divisible by five. It thinks there are six. Let's go and process it ourselves. Okay, zero, that's one. Five is two. Fifty-five is three. One hundred is four. Negative five is five. Negative fifty-five is six. All right, that looks good. Uh, count of negative values, four. One, two, three, four. Count of values greater than a hundred, two. Uh, let's see. Where are we? 101, 102, but not 100. So it looks like our logic's working just fine, and we've converted this just fine. That looks good. All right. Now, um, let's let's test if our current design can handle a line that doesn't have any integers on it at all. Like let's uh, let's go between line uh, nine and ten and just put in a blank line. Is this going to croak it or not? I predict that it will. Let's see. Let's go back to exercise three and run it again. And we're going to call this uh, integer series dot text. Oh, it croaked. That's bad. We got a value error. Invalid literal for int with base 10. Mm. And it looks like we just got the new line. That's all we got. Okay, so that, that's what it is at the, at the end of the line. You can't see it in the editor. So we didn't have anything there. Okay, so this isn't robust enough to uh, deal with that. Our next version will be, okay? But let's uh, not count on that first. So let's go back and say, okay, sorry, I didn't mean that. Okay, uh, save this again. And run the test again. And call it integer series dot text. And it ran just fine. Okay. Okay, we didn't mean to mess that up. So how could we handle multiple values? Well, one really easy way to do that would be to um uh, to take that line and do a split, right? If we if we do a split, uh, it's going to give us just what we want. Okay, so how could we do this? Well, we have value is string uh, is equal to the whole line. Well, that's not what we want. Okay, so how are we going to do that? Well, let's say um, let's call it something values values as well, as strings. This is going to be a list equals line split. Okay, that looks good. That looks real good. 
Okay, so we're going to take each each set of characters that could be uh, called a called a uh, each each set of qualifying uh, characters that we're thinking is going to be an int, and we're going to put them into the as an item in the list values as strings. Okay, and then what do we want to do? Well, we want to have a we want to do them in a for loop. Okay, what would the for loop look like? Well, let's look at this. So let's say this. Let's say for value um, no, for value as string in values as strings. Okay. Okay, so that's each one. Okay, then what are we going to do? Well, we're going to uh, we're going to say uh, this. We're going to say that value is going to be equal to value is going to be equal to the end of value as string. And each one is going to be called value as string when we get to it. Um, okay, so that works fine. And then uh, we're just going to take uh, the rest of this uh, processing and we're going to move it down. So we're going to take all this and we're going to indent it so it's under the 4. And we're going to get rid of the blank lines. And there it is. So let's look at this. So what's going to happen is uh, if in fact we haven't hit end of file, well then we're going to take the line and split it into all the values that we think we have. So if we get three, we're going to have three items. If we have two, we're going to have two items. Theoretically, if we have zero, okay, if, if we don't have any values as strings there, we're going to get zero items. I think that's going to help us, okay? All right, and then we're going to walk through them for value as string and values as strings. Uh, we're going to convert each uh, value, okay? So the the value is int of value as string, so now it's an int, and now we process it, and we're done. Do we do any processing if we've hit end of file? No, we don't, because we're hanging off the else. All right, now let's just go back and give that some testing. So uh, the first thing I want to know is it can it can it pass the test that we had before? Okay, can it pass integer series? All right, let's look. Let's uh, give it a run. Looks like we're going to have to right click out here to get it to run. And uh, let's call it integer series dot text. There it is. We got the same answers. That worked just fine. All right. Now, so we, we haven't lost any functionality, right? Um, but we haven't really tested the functionality to have more than one value on a line. Okay, well, let's go back to integer series.txt and make it a little more complicated. Okay, the first one will just have uh, one value. Um, but now we'll have, uh, uh, okay, how many even values do we have? We now have six. So let's add uh, 10 even values. Okay, so two, four, Six, so we've added uh, three, um, eight, 
12, we've added 5, 11, 22, that's 6, 44, that's 7, down here 100, that's uh, 32, that's 8, uh, 102, that's 9, 104, that's 10. Okay, so we've added 10, so we should go from 6 to 16. Okay, well, let's just see how that works right now. Okay, let's make sure that's properly saved. Let's go back and give it a run. And let's say we want uh, integer series dot text. Um, so the count of values I don't know why I thought I was doing evens. I'm going to have you doing evens. That was so silly. So I added all those, and all I got was uh, two more that were over 100. Okay. So I didn't add any negative values. I did add two over 100. Did I add any divisible by five? It looks like I didn't. I was confusing what I have you doing and what I have uh, me doing. So that was uh, silly. So I've gone up by two there. How many negatives? Well, let's add a couple of negatives, okay? Let's add uh, uh, negative three, negative, sorry, uh, negative six, negative uh, five, 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 five. That's going to change the fives by one, okay? Well, let's just see how they work. So we should go up by uh, two in the, the negatives and up by one in the divisible by fives. All right, let's go back and run it again. And let's say we want to integer series dot text. Okay, we went up on the one on the divisible by fives, and uh, the negatives were up to seven negatives, and I forget how many we had before, <laughs> so I'm going to have to count them. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven negatives. So it seems to be working fine. Okay, now. What if we accidentally put in a couple of records here that were blank? A couple of lines that are blank. Is it robust enough in its current version to, uh, to be able to put up with that? Well, let's see. Uh, let's uh, make sure this is saved and go back and run it again. And let's run. And then let's say we want to run integer series dot text. And it ran just fine. Now why does it run fine? Well, it has to do with the design of our processing for multiple values. Okay. Because we decided to do, we decided to split into a list, okay, it turns out that if we don't have any values, we're not going to get back any strings when we split it, okay? So when we say for value as string and values as strings, if there aren't any, it doesn't do anything, okay? If there's one, it processes one. If there are five, it processes five. If there are zero, it doesn't process anything at all. So this turns out to be a really nice way. And what is this? Well, this is a loop within a loop. Well, it's a nested loop. So where's the outer loop? The outer loop is a while. It goes like that. Where's the inner loop? Well, the inner loop is a four and it looks right there. Pretty neat, huh? So one of the really nice things about this uh, uh, for 
index uh, variable in uh, list is that it's very robust. If you have zero, it behaves well. If you have one, it behaves well. If you have a whole lot, it behaves well um, uh, too. So really pretty good stuff. So I'm thinking this is working fine. Let's see what we could do. I think we've got it properly tested. The only thing we haven't done is to check it with the code inspector. Let's inspect the code. And no suspicious code found. So it's uh, happy. So that's it for uh, exercise three. Your version's going to be a little different. Uh, and um, I'm going to say bye until next time.